I love fat tire e-bikes. For the area that I live and ride in, these come in so handy because there's a lot of gravel roads where I live and going over top of that loose stone can feel really bumpy over a normal bike tire, but with a fat tire e-bike, it just glides over top of them so it's a lot smoother of a ride. But the problem is most fat tire e-bikes come at a cost and they're more expensive. But this one is actually pretty affordable. This is the Sohamo M3 e-bike. It's a fat tire e-bike and it only comes in at $1,000, which for all the features that it has, that's actually a pretty good deal for this e-bike. Now there are obviously pros and cons just like every e-bike, which I'm gonna discuss in this video, but I really think this is actually a decent option if you're trying to get a fat tire e-bike for a low cost. When you first take a look at this e-bike, I think it looks awesome. I love this black color with these orange accents, I think looks really nice. And I love the fat tires, of course. They're 26 inches around and they're four inches wide. So nice large tires on it, which I feel like it makes the e-bike feel larger, bigger, especially with the step over bar here. It just feels like a bigger bike. The e-bike also comes with front and rear fenders on it. And it also has a nice rear rack here for it, which I feel like this this is a nice one. It's not just a cheap little one that they tossed on here, but it actually has a weight capacity of 110 pounds. If you want to haul any cargo, you'll be more than able to with this rear rack. Also taking a look at this rear rack, it has an integrated tail light into it, which actually glows brighter when you squeeze the handbrakes. So it signals to anybody behind you that you're braking, which is really nice here. I love when e-bikes integrate lights into it. And it also comes with a front headlight right here. Taking a look at the handlebar setup, you can see that the stem just goes straight forward and it's more of a flat handlebar setup. So it's more of like an athletic stance type of feel to it. And then it also comes with nice hand grips here, comes with brakes. These are just mechanical brakes. They're not hydraulic brakes. So they're not quite as nice as you would see on some other e-bikes, but they still get the job done. I had no trouble stopping at all on this e-bike. Comes with a seven speed Shimano shifter over here, which is pretty decent. And then it also has a left-handed thumb throttle. And then here is your display screen. It's a nice display screen. I think it's really simple and really clear to see what you're looking at visually. But the one thing I don't love about toggling through the different pedal assist levels is you can only go one way. If you hit the M button here, it's gonna increase the pedal assist level, but you can never turn it back down. You can only go higher in the levels until you cycle back over to zero and it restarts. So. I don't love that feature. I wish there was an up button and a down button, but it still gets the job done. Taking a look at the battery here, I actually upgraded to their longer range battery, which is the 20 amp hour one. And I'll put up on the screen the two different ranges you'll get with their standard battery versus their upgraded battery. You can see that it also has this plastic covering here for the charging port, which I kind of like this. It's easy to just swivel out of the way and slide back in place. So that's kind of pretty nice there. And then here's the key to actually operate the battery. And to me, this is a pro and a con. The good thing about it is that no one can just take your e-bike and turn it on if they don't have the key. So if I had the key with me, no one can actually mess with my e-bike and turn it on anymore. But the downside is, it's just one extra step to be able to turn on your e-bike. You always have to have a key with you, then you have to turn it on, and then you have to turn your e-bike on over here. What I really do like about this battery setup though, is it's really easy to take out of the e-bike because the seat has a little lever here, which you can fold it up and then have quick access to be able to take this battery out. You can see here that this also comes with front suspension. So that paired with these fat tires will just make for a very smooth buttery ride. I feel like when I'm riding this e-bike, it puts me in more of a forward athletic position instead of just a leisurely cruise, just because it sits you more forward on these handlebars and because the seat's kind of tilted. So it feels like I'm in more of a ready to go stance. So that's just how I feel about riding it. But as far as the motor goes, it's very smooth. It's actually a 750 watt rear hub motor, which propels me fine and I feel like you won't have any trouble going over any hills or anything like that. This throttle is really nice as well because once you put it into pedal assist level one, you have full range with the throttle and the throttle will actually go all the way up to 28 miles an hour, which is awesome if you wanna have all that speed even in pedal assist level one. 
when you're using the throttle. And you can see here, I got some crazy rocks that I'm gonna go over. I wouldn't go over top of these rocks if I was on any of my other e-bikes except for a fat tire ones because I'd be nervous I'd pop a tire. But for this, I don't even worry that I'm gonna puncture a tire going over top of this type of terrain. We also just had a rainstorm come through and it's really nice that these fenders are on here because I'm not getting dirty, the bike's not getting dirty, everything's staying a lot cleaner. Handles fine, the motor engages right away. It's kind of a gradual progression, so it's not gonna whiskey throttle you out there. It's very beginner friendly. It's a little bigger. See how weird this is getting off this thing? Even for me, I'm like 5'10", and this is still a, like a, have to like be on my tiptoe. I don't know how heavy this is. Let me pick it up. Yeah, that, yeah that's 70, yep. <laughs> I don't know weight limits. <laughs> Maybe 70 pounds? <laughs> I have no idea. All right, let's roll. That's something I forgot to mention actually, is that yes, it does have front suspension on it, but it is a little bit springy. It doesn't feel like uh, like a hydraulic front spring. So it is a little more like bouncy, if you will. Uh, that's how it feels like riding it, especially when you put a lot of pressure in that front spring. So what are my overall thoughts after testing the C-Bike, taking it for a ride and going through its features? Compared to more expensive e-bikes that are around $1,500, those more premium e-bikes, I feel like it doesn't quite have the same features or quality of features as those bikes because it doesn't have hydraulic brakes, it doesn't have a trigger shifter, and the suspension isn't quite the same as those higher end e-bikes. But the really nice thing about this e-bike is that it's affordable. Typically, you're not gonna find another e-bike that is a fat tire e-bike, has front and rear fenders, has a front and rear headlight that's integrated into the bike and it has a rear rack with a decent weight capacity and a decent range on the battery, you're typically not going to find an e-bike like this at this price point. So taking all that into consideration, it is a decent e-bike for the price. If you're looking to get a fat tire e-bike but you don't want to spend a lot of money, then consider checking this one out. I'll put a link in the description below for you to check it out for yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on another one.